Hello everybody, I wanted to take a moment and I wanted to do a brief video on the engine room. Um, some friends of mine in some of the steel band chat rooms and just my, my experience in general going around, <clears throat> excuse me, going around and checking out other steel bands and getting a chance to work with other steel bands. This is the area that's kind of the uncharted territory, so to speak. Um, I see a lot of times people will overlook the engine room. And what I mean by that is, is I'll go a lot of times and I'll, I'll spend most of my time uh, just making sure simple things feel good in the engine room. Because it's called the engine room for a reason. If the engine is not running well, then the rest of the car, the rest of the ensemble around you, does not uh, run so well. So um, I've watched the best of the best. I mean, I've seen some really great steel band clinicians do great things and they don't do any of it until they make sure that the, the brake drum and the conga and the, and the soca and the, everything is just nice and set. It really makes a big difference. So having said that, I just want to go over a couple real quick things. Uh, I want to start out with the drum set. Uh, typically the drum set is what you would think is going to be the person that drives the bus the most. And in smaller ensembles it is. Larger ensembles it's the person that hits does the kicks, you know, really punctuates, almost acts as a multi-percussionist. But before all that, we have to have a, a fundamental feel. And uh, there's two types of styles that are, 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 are most um, common in steel band literature, and that's calypso. And the calypso, the second one is soca, the calypso and the soca. The calypso, I'll just read real quickly something from uh, this book that I have here. Uh, it says, Calypso dates from the end of the 19th century with French, Spanish, English, and of course, African influences. Trinidad is the birthplace of Calypso as well of, of the steel band, the family of instruments created from 55-gallon oil drums. Calypso needs to be played smooth and relaxed with a basic groove to leave enough space for the rest of the percussion. Uh, I think the important parts there are smooth and relaxed. So let me just demonstrate a real quick version of that. This is your basic Calypso beat. Um, you have this idea, right? Money and uh, and then after that, you have some hi hat parts like this. Now, lots of times it's not smooth and relaxed. It feels pushed like this. The bass will go bum bum one up. That's the first thing I try and hit, is laying back on the bass. Buck to gum, to ka buck to gum, to ka buck to gum. And if you could just think about moving down the mall or, you know, moving down the street to this rhythm. You really feel that bass lay back. So that's one thing. Really, really check out where that bass is. Next, make sure that the hi hat. that feel. It's slightly swung. It's not and it's not it's that taffy in between. You may or may not put an emphasis on the ends. Sometimes open or close hi-hat is desired, but what matters is that taffy between the um and from there you can add you know little punctuations. stuff derives in terms of the, uh, the percussion that they were talking about in the book. But the basic idea, even at a faster tempo, ready, and, it's not, that's kind of in that hoedown country shuffle. Totally different feel. Doesn't lay back in the pocket, and it doesn't have that smooth feel to it. Okay, the second type of beat you'll notice is called the soca. Okay, a lot of times these are confused. The soca, let me read real quickly. Soca is a, con a contraction of the words soul and calypso. Fairly recent, it dates back to the 70s. The dance soca is often played up tempo with ghost notes. It's a lot like disco. It's Trinidad's disco. Sounds like this. So you want to get that. The second thing is it just has four on the floor. You know, nice and steady. Then the ghost that they're talking about can be anything. 
I've seen people just do 16th notes. Right? Or one e and a two e and a split between the hands. Or like I was doing. Just taking a typical strum pattern in the style of the music. And putting that in my left hand. Big picture though, I'm keeping this going. I can punctuate them anywhere I want, anywhere I want to lay that. But if I have that fundamental dance, that, that thump, that feel, and then accenting, using the snare almost as a talking voice or a melodic line. show you how my two hands, the right and the left part, interact. I change it to one e and two e and three e and four e and. A little bit more advanced, but it provides more of a move, upbeat. This is without that. When I change it with that one e and two e and, it gives a little bit more drive. That's the difference between Calypso and Salka. Now I have to quickly address, not quickly, but I want to make sure I pay attention to the iron. The iron is very, very important. Notice it's, it's just a brake drum. If you haven't seen this or, or witnessed this already, it's just a brake drum off of a car. And you want to get you an iron that has a good resonating sound to it. Lots of times it'll sound dead like that. That's not going to do the job. You need one that rings. has good tone. You want to play it with metal if you can. Sticks are okay, but you know you get a different texture altogether. It's all right. Either one will work, but I prefer metal. And the simpler the better. If you could play inside, starting with just 16th notes, that's going to create a nice steady feel for your average calypso or soca sound, where you can keep that that traditional sounding drive, and you can have room to work in between. It's almost like your metronome, you know? The, the bands in Trinidad will have three or four people on these instruments, you know? I see lots of times people playing them and they're just, you know, oh, I'm stuck on the brake drum. And they got all these accents that they're putting. And it's just, oh, stop, all you need is this. That's inside the centerpiece, or moving out. Later, you can think about, you know, putting a little accent, right, with that upbeat in the, in the style of the, the drum set player, or whatever you hear. But play simple, and make it groove. The iron is very, very important. And, while I'm talking about that, the cowbell is also very, very important. Now, here's some of the things that I've seen, you know, first off, the cowbell, <laughs> more cowbell is the best. But you don't just want to sit there and whack it. You know, think about ding 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 If I put that, whatever. I'm trying to make a little bit more excitement out of the instrument. You know, obviously I should dance, I should move. It's another thing I don't see often at first glance is an engine room moving together, enjoying the fact that somebody's playing the cowbell. I'll play cowbell all day long. I love it. I'll play the brake drum all day long. I love it. Last but not least is the uh, usually conga part. But what I have here is I have two A-way drums just because they're close to my drum set. I don't feel like digging out the congas. But the conga part normally sounds something like this. Right? And that 
matches the um t um t um t um. on these rhythms, it's where they get their African roots, and where they get, you know, this great hodgepodge of rhythms coming together to make a cemented groove that is just unstoppable when you put the, a, a drum set player, a break drum, cowbell, and maybe conga. Now, you can add other things. Uh, I don't have a scratcher here, but you add a scratcher, triangle, bongo, all kinds of stuff, but the main idea is to really take these things and, and, and research them, embrace playing them, and have fun because every part of the engine is important. Turn the key, no spark plug, no go. You know, every part is important. Don't take any of them lightly because in the end, it makes everybody in the rest of the ensemble just feel the music, move, and have a great time like this, you know? Start out like that, getting your entire engine room to be able to interpret those basic rhythms and maybe be able to sing each one, picking them apart, drawing attention to those individual parts. What's the bass drum part playing in the drum set? What are the congas playing if your drum set player is not really listening to anything but drum set? But then it goes outward. What is the bass pan playing? Boom, boom, beam, boom, 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 beam. You know, what are the, the seconds playing? Did it, did it, did it, did it. All these things coming together makes that, that true rhythmic puzzle fit, and it just all feels good. So, again, the engine room, embrace it. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.